All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and walk through some of these energy problems real quick. First one I want to talk about is this one with Mr. Shidel. says Mr. Shidel is a real risk taker. He loves to go bungee jumping nearly every week. Consider the following unusual bungee drop that Mr. S, with a mass of 78 kilograms, is held at the natural length of the bungee cord. He is then released and falls until the bungee cable stops him. If the bungee cable has a spring constant of 560 newtons per meter. So what we're looking at really quick is something like this, where maybe this is our bridge, and then here is our bungee. And this is the natural length, meaning that it's not stretched at the natural length, right? And then from there, we are going to drop Mr. Shadell. So here's Mr. Shadell, and we are going to just let him fall, and he's going to fall some distance, maybe all the way down here, I don't know, but the distance that he falls is going to be the distance that our bungee is going to stretch. And at this point, like it said, he stops moving, so we know that his velocity at the bottom is zero. So now that we talked about the basics of this problem, let's see if there's anything that we can identify really quick says, at Mr. Shadell's natural length, what type of energies does he have? Well, we know that at his natural length, he's just being held there. So he doesn't have any kinetic. We also know that the natural length, the bungee is not stretched, so he doesn't have any EPE. And again, we also know that at the natural length, he's not moving or anything, so we're not going to start with any thermal energy. This problem also doesn't tell us that there's air resistance, so we're just going to ignore it, which means that at his lowest point, down here, he has zero thermal energy. We also said that at his lowest point, his velocity is zero, meaning that his kinetic energy is zero. And at the lowest point, we can assume that height is zero at the lowest point, meaning that his gravitational potential energy is zero there. So what does that mean? That means that initially, we're starting with all GPE, and at the end, we only have EP. So all of this gravitational energy is going to transfer into EB. So let's figure out how much GPE he has to begin with. Well, we know that GPE is equal to mass times gravity times height. And we also know that all of this GPE is going to get transferred into EP. And EP is equal to 1 half kx squared. Something important to note here, though, is that the height in which Mr. Chidel is falling is right here, and the distance our spring is stretching is from here to here. So these two things are actually the same. So we can say that x equals h. Therefore, we can go ahead and set GPE equal to EPE. I'm gonna do that real quick, GPE equals EPE. And then I'm going to write the two equations that I just wrote, mgh, equals 1 half k x squared. And then remember, we said x is equal to h, so we can replace this h with x. So mgx is equal to 1 half k x squared. We notice that we have x's on both sides, so we can go ahead and cancel one of these out. So this one's gone, and we lose the squared. Now, all we have is mg is equal to 1 half k x. We can solve for x really quick by dividing 1 half over and k. So we get 2 mg divided by k is equal to x. All we have to do is solve for x really fast. We find out that x should be equal to 2.73. 2.73 equals x. I'm going to go and put that in my table right here. And now that I have x, I can go back and I can solve for EPE, and then I can solve for GPE as well. So for EP, I know that EPE is equal to 1 half kx squared. I can plug my numbers in here. I have x, and the problem told me that k was 560 newtons per meter. So I plug all that in, and I find out that EPE should be equal to 2086.81 joules. And I can just take this elastic potential energy and put it in my chart up here, 2086.81 joules. Again, I know that all this EPE is the same as this GPE because energy is transferred and energy is conserved, so we don't lose any energy. So I just write the same answer up here. 
And now I'm going to take a look at our last part. So the last question asks us to figure out how fast will Mr. Shadell be moving at half the stretch distance. So this question is really important because it's talking about this point right here. And at this point right here, we can see that our x is half and our height is half. So I'm going to take the really long way to solve for this because I know a lot of people have issues with it. So at half the stretch distance, my GPE should be equal to mass times gravity times half the height. And my EPE should be equal to one half K and then half the X. But we can't forget that X is squared. We know what these values are here, so we can go ahead and solve for it again. We know that H is just equal to X, which is just equal to 2.73. So I find out that at half the stretch distance, my GPE is 78 times 9.8 times one half of X. So I can just do one half times 2.73. I solve for this, and I just find out that my GPE is just half the GPE that I started with. So my GPE here is going to be 1,043.45. Okay, I think that's right, I did it in my head. All right, after we get GP, let's solve for the EP over here. So if we plug our numbers in, we get one half, K was 560, and then one half times X, X is 2.73 squared. We find out that this, though, is not one half of our EP. It's actually one fourth of it. And the reason is that this one half is being squared. So if we cut X in half, we're actually cutting the elastic potential energy in a fourth. So this is 521.7. And this is going to be really important because now we're going to notice that we have this much EP and this much GPE but our total energy should be 2086.81. So where did this leftover energy go? We're missing some. Well, at half the stretch distance, we're moving. And because we're moving, that means that we have kinetic energy. So our kinetic energy is actually going to equal the total energy minus our GPE at half the distance minus our elastic potential energy. So we find out that our kinetic energy here should just be one fourth of the total energy because that's what we're missing. And that's 521.7 joules. Now that we have the kinetic energy, we can use it to solve for velocity. So 521.75 is equal to one half mv squared. Go ahead and plug our numbers in and solve. And we get a velocity of 3.66 meters per second.